Happy Easter, Lifeway, and wonderful to celebrate Easter with you. He is risen. He is risen indeed, and that is a wonderful promise and a great fact that we have a risen Lord and Savior who takes away our pain, who helps with the pressures of today, and gives us a purpose to share his love with others for tomorrow. And so on this joyous day of the empty tomb, I want to share with you a great promise that Jesus gives to us. It's found in John chapter 8, and Jesus states this. He made an incredible, profound statement, and he said, You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. You and I, having a relationship with Jesus Christ, being Christ followers, are free indeed. Perhaps you're joining us this morning and friends have invited you or you've checked out our, our page throughout the week for an Easter sermon. And I want to share with you, you may not understand what it means to be a Christian. It's not about religion, it's about relationship with Jesus Christ. God, Holy Spirit, our Father, the three in one. He came down as a babe born in a manger, which allowed his love to be available to all, to shepherds, to wise men. He grew in wisdom and stature. He taught love and peace. And he went to the cross and took our sins, our mistakes, our failures, the things that we have regrets over. He took all that to the cross we don't have to live with. And we are forgiven. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And he is the truth that sets us free. And so, you may think, free from what? Well, I've shared already. Pain. Pain in this life. Pain and discouragement and disappointments. He sets us free from the pressures. I mean, there's a lot of pressure we're dealing with today. And God wants to take that away. He wants to help us with that. And even no matter what the circumstances, to give us, to give us opportunity to be able to use the power of his love to share his love with others. You know, the apostles, the disciples, were disappointed. In John chapter 20, after Jesus Christ was crucified, they saw their friend, their teacher, their Lord, who they spent three years with, learning and discovering his love and seeing miracles. They saw him persecuted, tortured, and executed on the cross of Calvary. And in John 20, we read this, in John chapter 20, beginning in verse 19, on the evening of that first day of the week, once again, this is after Jesus Christ was crucified, this is Monday, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of Jewish leaders, they had seen Jesus create, I mean, do wonderful miracles, raise people from the dead, And yet here they were, they were locked in fear, locked in fear in a door, and not just that the fact that there was a locked door, keeping that they were locked in even emotional fear. They were caged up in fears of what was going to happen. Does that sound familiar during this time of being sheltered in the virus? Is there disappointments going on in your life? The disciples were discouraged. They were confused and afraid. They are hiding behind closed doors, locked for fear of the Jewish leaders. The story was already circulating that the disciples had stolen the body of Jesus. Perhaps the authorities would apprehend and punish them. Perhaps Rome would execute them as well for breaking the tomb seal, which they didn't do. They did not know, but the air was filled with a mixture of confusion and fear. Once again, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Here, this Easter Sunday, the realization is many of us are sheltered in our homes during this time of the virus. And my question is, are we focused on our risen Lord and Savior, or are we focused on the circumstances around us? Jesus Christ takes away our pain and our despair because he is our risen Lord and Savior, and that power frees us indeed. Like the apostles... A young boy named Anthony faced disappointment and troubling times also. As a young boy, he was small for his age and was not able to do a lot of things that his uh, <clears throat> counter kids of his age were able to do because he was small. But it would be his determination that he would carry on as he grew older 
as he grew taller and stronger, that would allow him to gain a scholarship at the University of Minnesota, where he would be their starting quarterback. He would wind up going on playing three years in the NFL for the Pittsburgh Steelers and San Francisco 49ers. Anthony would begin his NFL coaching career in 1980. Went on to serve as the head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and later the Indianapolis Colts. In 2007, Anthony, as many of us know him, coach Tony Dungy, led his Colts to a, <clears throat> to a Super Bowl win over the Chicago Bears, making him the first African-American head coach to claim that championship title. However, before that championship win, Coach Dungy and his family would face the tragedy of the death of his son, Jamie, to suicide three days before Christmas. That tragedy, Coach Dungy would speak publicly about later. He stated this, it was tough enough. It was very tough and very painful. However, as painful as it was, there were some good things that came out of it. How in the world could someone say something like that? Well, in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the despair, he realized he didn't have to stay there. As awful as grieving that was for the loss of his son, Coach Dungy had a relationship with Jesus Christ. And what he shared about the painful experience is the fact that he knew. He knew, not just because he believed it, he saw it lived out in his life as people supported him, as other Christian brothers and sisters gathered around him and helped him and his family gain that support. That is how we show the presence of Christ. And we show the presence of Christ, and we have that power, because Jesus literally appeared. Here's what the rest of Scripture says. What Coach Dungy knows, what his family discovered in getting them through this painful time, we have also. We have this freedom, too. And so John 20, 19 through 20 states this. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. It wasn't a spirit. It wasn't a ghost. They weren't hallucinating. It was Jesus Christ himself. And there he stood. We are free indeed because Jesus Christ is risen. Amen. And that power, that power that he, to overcome death, is the same power that takes care of all the circumstances around us. It was a painful time for the disciples. It was a painful time for Coach Dungy and his family. Yet, Jesus Christ, the risen Lord and Savior, if we seek him, if we follow him, have a relationship with him, and keep him first, takes away our pain, takes away the painful experiences, and takes away the despair. As quick as we take a breath, Jesus can change things. He is the truth. He sets us free. We are free indeed. Coach Dungy and his family faced pain. However, they did not have to live in despair, anguish, or remorse because they knew that the risen Lord and Savior, Jesus, sets them free. Scripture states this, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and he saves those whose spirits have been crushed in Psalms 34, 18. Put your heart right and reach out to God. Then face the world again, firm and courageous. Then all your troubles will fade from your memory, like floods that are past and remembered no more. Job chapter 11, 13-16. Jesus appearing before the disciples turned their pain into joy. Coach Dungy shares how Jesus' love carried his family during the tragedy. In his book, Quiet Strength, Coach Dungy shares this. He writes about those early days following Jamie's death. When his entire family, they were, we were all in shock. We believe God when he says that he works all things for his good for those who love him. You've got to really draw close to the Lord. That has to be your goal. Now, he didn't go on to say or misquote that scripture and say that <clears throat> everything, even if it sounds bad, it really is good. It wasn't confusing. What he's saying is that from the brokenness in this world, from the tragedies we face, Jesus Christ brings about good. And so Jesus appeared to the disciples and it turned their sorrow into joy. It goes on is that we understand this, that we are free indeed because Jesus takes our pain. We are free indeed because he also takes our pressure. 
We are living in tremendous pressure right now. We are trying to figure out what's going to happen next. Um, am I walking too close to someone? Was that cough that I heard? Is that someone who's spreading the virus? On and on we can go. We live in and you fill in the blank. We have to be concerned about you fill in the blank. What pressures, what stresses, what things are going on? Jesus Christ takes our pain and pressure. After Jesus revealed himself to the disciples, you would think that they began to do great things <clears throat> in his name. Nope. In John 21, uh, beginning with verse 3, we read this. Peter says to everyone, I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told him. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Do you feel that with all the pressures of life, you're trying, you're trying to do this, you're trying to do that, trying to figure everything out? Our Lord and Savior says, stop. Let me be your Lord and Savior. Let me take care of you. He revealed himself to the, to the apostles. He showed them, here I am. I am risen. He is risen indeed. And he's come to set us free. And yet, instead of taking that <clears throat> wonderful message out, they said, hey, let's just go hold up someplace and go fishing. Let's just go back to what we know. Jesus has so much more better than anything the world can offer. What is it that you're seeking comfort in now? Are you seeking in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ or things that aren't producing hope? How much time are we spending listening to everybody else, every other type of media, except listening to Jesus Christ? And so, as we look at this and we see, imagine the pressures they were feeling. <clears throat> you know, imagine what was going on in their lives. In the midst of pressure and certainty, Jesus didn't get angry with them. Here's what Jesus did for the apostles. And here's what he wants to do for us. He takes the pressure away by meeting, our, by meeting our needs. And this is what he did. He fixed them breakfast. John 21, 4 through 14 states, Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Are you searching for answers? Jesus is right there. He's right there. He says, I love you. I'm here and I'm not silent. I know you by name. I know every hair on the top of your head, even those of us who are losing hair. He still knows every hair on the top of our head. He knows everything about us. He loves us. He knows the concerns. In the book of Genesis, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And in John chapter 1, verse 1, it states this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. In Him was the light, and that light was the light of men. What those two verses mean that before the problems ever began, Jesus Christ was there. The answer to everything we're facing, even in our lives, the answer, if this virus wasn't around, those hurts, those pains, those things that cause you pressure, Jesus says, I am here. Give it to me. Let me make you breakfast. And so Jesus did that for the disciples. And it goes on in verse 5, he called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul in the net because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say it is the Lord, he wrapped up his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they had landed, they saw a fire of burning coals, there with the fish on it and some bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came took bread and gave it to him, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to disciples after he was raised from the dead. Jesus met the disciples and gave them what they needed. Scripture shares this, God never grows faint or weary. He gives power to those who are tired and worn out. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 29. He's there. You feeling worn out? He's got the power for you. He is risen. He is risen indeed. 
Scripture goes on, Philippians 4, 13, I'm ready for anything through the strength of Christ who lives in me. And in Matthew 11, 28 to 29, Jesus states, Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me for real rest, and you'll recover your life, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Just as Jesus healed the pain and took their pressures, he did the same for Coach Dungy. Coach Dungy shares, among the many outpourings of love after the tragedy they received was a letter from a girl who attended the family's church in Tampa. The girl had known Jamie for many years and went to his funeral. Dungy shared part of the girl's letter at an athlete's in action breakfast. He stated, when I saw what happened at the funeral, reading this letter, this girl stated, excuse me, when I saw what happened at the funeral and your family and the celebration and how it was handled, that was the first time I realized there had to be a God. She wrote, I accepted Christ into my life and my life's been different since that day. Dungey went on to add, there, that was an awesome blessing. So all those things kind of made me realize what God's love is all about. Days after his son's death, Dungey was back in Indianapolis coaching his Colts. He acknowledged that he wasn't fully healed, but he felt a strong conviction to lead his playoff-bound team. Because of Christ's spirit in me, Dungey told the folks gathered at the breakfast, I have the peace of mind in the midst of something that's very, very painful. And he states this, that's my prayer today, that everyone would have the same kind of peace. Here's the good news. The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead can raise us from our problems, can raise us from this virus. It, it's available to us. If Jesus Christ can raise a dead person, he can raise a dead marriage. He can raise a dead career. He can raise a dead relationship. He can do anything. He's got all the power we need. When we get God's power in our life, we're set free from the pressures and the pain of today because we can handle anything. Like the like Apostle Paul said in Philippians 4, 13, which I read pre previously, I'm ready for anything. I can handle anything because I've got God's power in my life. Jesus Christ sets us free from the pain and pressures of life and gives us pur purpose. He frees us from the pessimism about the future and gives us hope. Living out the freedom Jesus provides is proof to the world that everyone can be free indeed. That's what God's calling us to do, dear Christian brother and sister. Calling us to live out the truth that Jesus sets us free. In Acts chapter 2, because Jesus doesn't just set us free just to keep it to ourselves. He sets us free for a purpose. And to discover what that is and understand and fulfill that with his empowering us. And fight. It's that sharing that his love sets us free. And so in Acts chapter 2, after Jesus ascended to heaven, the Holy Spirit gave the apostles power to share God's love and freedom that's found in Jesus. The day of Pentecost is a national holiday that Jews from all over the world shared. And so we discover in Acts chapter 2 that they gathered. Jewish people from around the known Roman world at that time gathered in Jerusalem. There's thousands of people there. And the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, God the Father, enabled and gave the apostles power to share God's love, to give them teachings that each person from different countries would hear in their own language. And in that power and presence during this time, the disciples shared with the crowds Jesus' love for them. Acts chapter 2, 36-40, the apostle Peter shared this in the sermon that they proclaimed. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were, they were <clears throat> cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent, turn, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 people were added to their number that day. Now, when we started with the apostles, there were 11 guys locked up in a room, scared to death. And here they were. Here they were, days later. They were sharing Christ's saving grace. His transforming power, 
sharing it with others. It's amazing what Christ can do. 3,000 people chose God's love that was found in Jesus Christ. Jesus healed the disciples' pain and took their pressure to give them a purpose, to share his love so that others will be free indeed. What Jesus did for the disciples, he did for Coach Dungey and his family. Coach Dungey knows he could have done a better job, as he writes in his book, <clears throat> Quite Straight. He shares that in all of those areas, he could have done some, some things better with Jamie, but beating himself up was not going to help him or his family through this difficult time. What has helped him, what has brought healing, is for him to talk openly about his family's experience. Dungey has spoken about Jamie's death on nu numerous occasions and is in front of many different groups. He is aware that suicide is on the rise in America, especially among the youth, which he says has become an epidemic. He states, I probably talk to 15 or 20 parents a year who have lost kids to suicide, said. It's not easy, it's not fun, and it's very painful. The message Coach Dungey gives to parents is consistent with the way he and his wife handled Jamie's death. The only way you can make it through, in my opinion, is to have that faith in God and rely on Christ Jesus. He says, my wife and I have different ups and downs, periods when both of us are feeling good or both of us are feeling bad. We just, had to, we just have to support each other. What we found was the most important thing with our family was to keep those lines of communication open. They found that how they were healing was best processed with each other as a family. Dungey also hears from parents who lost children to non-suicide death. Anytime you lose a child, Coach Dungey says, it doesn't matter how, how it happened. It's devastating. You've got to really draw closer to the Lord. That has to be your goal. Today, Coach Dungey <clears throat> leans on his faith more than ever. It's easy to say, I, re I, rely, I really believe in God, and God is with me when everything is great and you're winning the Super Bowl. But when you have a negative situation and you realize that God pulls you out, it strengthens your faith. So for me, my faith has grown. Dungey and his wife did not let their son's death detour them from, their, from growing their family. In addition, to their current three, in addition to their current three biological kids, they have adopted seven others and have taken in foster kids. Their son Jamie's death changed them, but the prayer is that God will continue using their heartbreaking loss for his good and glory. What Jesus did for the disciples and what he has done and continues to do for Coach Dungey's family, he does today for all of us. He sets us free from the pain and pressures of life and gives us purpose. He frees us from pessimism about the future and gives us hope. Living out the freedom Jesus provides is proof to the world that everyone can be free indeed. Scripture states this, I know, God says, what I'm planning for you, says the Lord. I have good plans for you, plans, <clears throat> not plans to harm you. I will give you hope and a good future, Jeremiah 29, 11. Scripture continues on in Psalms 125, 1. Those who trust in the Lord are as steady as Mount Zion, unmoved by any circumstances. And I, Prophet Isaiah writes in 54, 10, the mountains and hills may crumble, but my love for you will never end, says the Lord, who loves you. My love for you will never end, says the Lord, who loves you. I'm not talking about religion today. I'm talking about a relationship. What I want you to know, what I want you to understand, is what it means to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. A relationship with God. Not just do you know about God, not just that you like him or think he's good, but that you know God. He already knows you. Many of us, many listening today have felt close to him in the past, and you just kind of drifted away. Why not this Easter? Why not this Easter reconnect? Why don't you come home to him this Easter? Maybe you felt unworthy. Maybe you felt, I can't come to God because of all the stuff I've done in my life. You're wrong. God has a gift. In the midst of everything going on in our world today that brings pain and pressure and pessimism about the future, God says, I am here and I'm not silent and I love you and I've shown you that love by dying on the cross of Calvary and rising again. You're wrong if you believe you can't accept him. You're wrong if you believe that you're not good enough because it's a gift. 
It's a free gift from God to trust Jesus. It is freedom, freedom from the pain of your past, the pressures of today, and the pessimism and worry, doubt, and fear about tomorrow. What a deal. But a gift is worthless if you never receive it. You've got to take it. Start fresh with God. This Easter, start fresh with Him. Well, there's all this stuff, yes? And if it wasn't this virus, it'd be something else. There'd be something else personally going on in your life. There'd be something else that's happening. Well, I'm sharing with you what is greater than our circumstances is our Lord and Savior who was risen, and He's risen indeed. But what shared his scripture says, Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and fellowship with him. What do you have to gain? What do you have to gain if you open your life to Christ? You say, Jesus, however you communicate and talk with him, you know, make it your own. See, Jesus, I, I don't understand everything, but I know you love me. And I want to seek you. And, and I want to give you the pain, the pressure. The pessimism of the future, I want to give it all to you so that I can have a future and a hope. And to be able to share that future and hope you've given me with others. To be free. To be free indeed. My past is forgiven. I get a purpose for living when I have Jesus in my life. And I get a home in heaven. What a deal. Why in the world would I walk out in that kind of deal? You can have it. You can have it today. What Coach Dungey shared about the tragedy of losing his son is that the power of Jesus Christ heals and sets him free. What I want to share with you is that same power that set the disciples free to carry on their purpose, that set Tony Dungy excuse me, and his family free, is there for all of us. You may have shared that, you know, I used to do this God stuff or Christian stuff or church stuff years ago, but it just kind of, you know, slipped away and, that's never really happened. You know, God's never left you. It's just our choices. And so I'm sharing with you is that today, you can have Jesus Christ in your life, guiding and leading. But it's a choice. A choice you have to make. I've heard people say, you know, Russ, this stuff sounds really good, and I, you know, it's fine, but it's just not for me. You know, that's a lie. It is for you. And the life that you've always wanted is right there. And so today, if you've never trusted Jesus Christ in heart and life, it's just asking Him. I'd like to leave you in this simple prayer. For those who are watching for the first time or may watch and say, Hey, I really want to have a relationship with Jesus and never done that. It's just you being intentional and praying a prayer. I'm going to pray as we close. And as I pray, I prayed a prayer many years ago when I asked Jesus Christ to be my Lord and Savior. I said, Yes, Lord, I want a relationship with you. And it's a prayer you can pray. It doesn't matter what words you say or what matters, what matters what's going on in your heart. And just saying to God, Lord, yeah, me too. And so just pray this prayer with me. If you would like to have Jesus Christ take away the pain, the pressures, and the pessimism. And say, Lord Jesus, I understand how much you love me. That you went to the cross and took away all my pain, the sins, the mistakes, the things that I've done. And you took them to the cross. And I thank you for doing that. I thank you for dying on the cross. And I thank you that you rose again because you are God. And you've given me the promise that if I simply intentionally just ask you to have a relationship with you, that to ask you to say, Father, I want to follow you, that you'll accept me. I thank you. And I thank you for accepting me, for loving me, and that I am your child. In your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. I want to share with you that if you trust in Jesus Christ, your heart life, if you ask him to have a relationship, angels are rejoicing this morning. There are many of you also watching today, a part of our church family, who profess that you are a Christian, you're a Christ follower, and stuff is just knocking the joy out of you. And I want to share with you that our Lord and Savior is here. He's not silent. And the greatest impact we can make is showing the peace that God gives us. His love in the midst of what's going on. And so, would you join me in this prayer, my fellow Christ followers? Lord Jesus, this virus, this stuff going on, we live in uncertainty. And we don't know what's going to happen next, but we don't want to live in fear. We claim your promise that you have a plan of hope for us. We claim your promise 
that you are with the broken heart. We claim your promise, Lord, that mountains may move, but your love does not. And it's your love that we claim, that power that makes us steadfast. Help us to live focused in your power so that we can share the purpose you've given us to share your love, your grace with those around us. And that people ask, where do you get this peace? Where do you get this certainty? And we can say it's not anything we do, but trusting you. Trusting you, Lord Jesus. And we thank you and love you. Thank you for rising again. And that you have risen and risen indeed. We love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I want to share with you that myself and Grace Marie, we love you. Happy Easter. We are here for you. If you have any questions about some of the things we talked about today, please email us or contact us on our um, LifeWay Facebook page. I want to share with you that um, next week uh, we're going to be starting a Bible study on joy. And we'd love for you to join us, and we'll send some information out. Have a wonderful, blessed Easter weekend. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. God bless you all.